Welcome to a screencast on how to graphically determine the instantaneous rate of reaction. Now for this we're going to use an example where we have some concentration versus time data that's been collected for a specific reaction. 2xy3 makes x2 plus 3y2 and we're going to use this information to determine the instantaneous rate of reaction at 20 seconds. Okay now how do we do this? Well here we have the uh, relevant information just put in one location, kind of smaller, leaving us some room to work. And we need to remember that rates of reaction, whether instantaneous or not, are going to be the change of concentration with respect to time. Now instantaneous rates are going to be the instantaneous change of concentration versus time. And this is going to correspond to a slope and this means we're going to need to graph our data. So we need to make a very careful graph, whether you use graph paper and do it by hand or use a graphing program, you need to plot the points carefully. You're going to need to graph the time on the x-axis versus the concentration on the y-axis, and here our concentration of is, x, is of x, y, 3. And then you carefully plot the points and then draw a smooth curve through those data points. And now the instantaneous rate of reaction is going to correspond to the slope of this line at the appropriate location. It's going to be the slope of the tangent line and so we're going to need to draw in a tangent line at 20 seconds. Now remember the tangent lines are lines that touch the curve at only that one point and you're going to need to draw this in as carefully as you can trying to touch the curve only at that point. You're approximating the slope of the curve at that instant. This involves some estimation so here's my, draw, my line drawn in. Some of you might possibly make the line slightly steeper or slightly shallower in slope, but it should be fairly close to this. And to make a good estimate, you have to draw the line straight. You need to make then a fairly big, in this case, right triangle to approximate the rise over the run, which is going to correspond to the slope. So here I chose to make my right triangle with the uh, right angle corner right at the origin of the graph and I am now going to estimate my rise which is the change in concentration of xy3 over the run which is the change in time and it looks to me like we go from 0 to about uh, 0.64 or so molar for the rise and we go from 0 to about maybe 43 minutes or so for the run. So let's do this calculation then. Change of xy3 with respect to time for our tangent line which corresponds to the instantaneous slope and the instantaneous rate of reaction. Actually it's going to be the instantaneous rate of change of xy3 uh, is going to be 0.64 molar over 43 minutes and note that the line slopes negatively so you do have to pay attention to sign we have a negative sign out in front. This corresponds to initial time of zero and final time of 43 minutes and initial concentration of 0.64 and final concentration of zero. Again, this is a, the estimate for our tangent line. Do the math, get about negative 0.0149 molar per minute probably can't estimate beyond two significant digits for our x uh, change in x and change in y values. So we probably really should round this off to negative 0.015 molar per minute. Now if the question asked for the instantaneous rate of change of xy3, we'd be done. But the question asked for the instantaneous rate of reaction and we have to remember that for a given reaction each substance here, xy3, x2, and y2, are changing at different rates, or at least potentially changing at different rates. xy3 has a coefficient of 2, x2 has a coefficient of 1, y2 has a, has a coefficient of 3, 
XY3 is decreasing in concentration because it's reacting and being used up. X2 and Y2 are increasing in concentration because they're being formed. And our convention is that to do a rate of reaction, we can pick any substance that's reacting, and then we just adjust to make the rate of reaction such that whichever substance you pick, you're going to get the same rate of reaction. And to do this, we take the change, rate of change of the substance, and then divide by its coefficient. So in the case of xy3, we take the change of xy3 with respect to time, divide by 2. Well, we actually write it as multiplying by 1 half, but it's the same effect. And then we put a negative sign there because xy3 is decreasing in concentration and the rate of reaction is by convention positive, so we take the negative of the negative value to get a positive rate of reaction. If we had been given x2 data instead, then we'd take change of x2 with respect to time, divide by 1 because that's its coefficient, and then it's already a positive value, so we leave it alone. So that one is just pretty easy, not going to change from the chain, from the rate of change of x2. And if we had y2 data instead, we divide by 3, its coefficient, which is the same as multiplying by 1 third. And again, it's already positive, so we don't change its sign. Okay, well, we have xy3 data, so we're going to use this to calculate our rate of reaction. So rate of reaction is going to equal negative a half of change of xy3 concentration with respect to time. That's negative a half times negative 0.015 molar per minute. The negative times the negative makes it positive, and we then get 0 0.0075 molar per minute as our estimated rate of reaction. And if you had a different time, you'd do the same process, but you'd have a different instantaneous rate because the slope's going to be different at that time. If you were given a different substance for its concentration, you may have to do a different calculation to get the rate of reaction, but this process would be the same. Okay, so hope that was helpful, and that is it for the graphical determination of the instantaneous rate of reaction.